Okay, so how's everybody doing? So this is part four of the uh, building and painting of the uh, bridge facade. Uh, now let me just preface with, um, like I know that these types of uh, episodes don't, you know, maybe uh, interest uh, everyone, uh, but it would be unfair if I was to skip through this uh, just for the sake of just doing popular videos. Like I don't, I mean, that's not why I started the channel, right? The cha I mean, I want to try to address uh, every aspect of the Glover Road diorama as a sample, as you all know, as a demo of, 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 of how I go about building a shelf layout. And the idea is to just try to cover a little bit of each area uh, to encourage and maybe give some people some ideas that they can take themselves and evolve with their own imagination, their own practical application, and achieve uh, exciting results that uh, ultimately raises our immersion level. Because that's what we're after, right? Whether it's an unpainted locomotive, your favorite old Bachman, like whatever it is, um, we want to try to create a scene that's, whether it's whimsical or prototypical, as being somewhat immersive enough and realistic enough to, you know, escape reality, I guess. But anyway, so I'm just going to move um, along here. But before I, I, I even talk about or even if I can make it to the layered painting process, uh, I need to point out a few things regarding random texture effects. Now, in the earlier episode, I mentioned about using the essential gesso here, which is for acrylic and oil. Now, I just need to say that I use whatever I can get my hands on. Like I was trained and schooled and uh, cultured in like if you didn't have a, a particular paint product on hand, like and you didn't waste time trying to find it or locate it or, 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 or wait for it to arrive. You just used what you had. And so I decided to try this. Now I know that like I know the qualities of this and as you can see when it's put on plastic it, it can peel off, see? See that? When you start to pull the tape, like watch what happens here. All right. See how it kind of lifts? Like it, it, it almost becomes tape itself. Now, though, now these effects can be desirable, uh, or they can be viewed as disastrous. But I'm going to leave them. Uh, I want some of it to fall away, actually, because this is a very old bridge, and I don't want this consistent, perfect lines of. Uh, demarcation mold marks are running on my model. I want that randomness. This can be resealed. Like this stuff is very robust, this gesso. Um, I, I wouldn't uh, recommend it maybe for some because they might be disappointed or, 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 you know, shocked at, oh no, you know, what happened to my model? But, you know, for like armor modelers or big scale people, this stuff is excellent for doing peeling paint and uh, rust and erosion effects. But, I'll leave that up to you as you experiment yourself, but I'm going to go with it. Like, I'm not going to call this fail. And remember how I said that I'm going to show even things that don't come out the way I expect them? Like, here's a good one. See, there's a good pull. There's a good peel. All right. The peel factor. Um, and this is, once again, what I was saying, that the randomness and the mistakes that occur, there's a silver lining to them, right? Uh, by the time you get to the end process, like you'll see for yourself. So when washes are thrown over this after the initial lacquer coats, uh, those washes, the pigment, are going to catch these little lines and create its own sort of uh, weathered random effect that uh, almost in every case turns out quite pleasing. Okay, so let me just uh, show you what I'm going to do with this then. So what? So once this is all peeled, I'm going to take, excuse me, I'm going to take, uh, uh, I have these three colors here that I picked up at uh, Canadian Tire or the hardware store, whatever, I, where I got them, Home Depot, whatever. So uh, this is like a, uh, called a, what's this one called, just so you know. This is Satin Heirloom White, but it's actually more of a beige. And then this one is called Satin Nutmeg. And then this one is uh, espresso. Oh, there you go. Good old espresso. 
Anyway, so these colors are of the same sort of spectrum. That's why I'm going to use them. I'm going to spray these randomly uh, over top of the bridge facade. And the reason why I want to do that is I'll point it out to you right here, and I hope this diagram will help to make some sense. Okay, so let's just pretend that this, this cross section here is the plastic bridge facade. Right here. Okay. It's this part. Then this next texture layer is the tape and the gesso painted over top, right? Like this. It's, it's this stuff. That's what this layer is right here. Now, with the spray bombs, the three random colors that I'm just going to throw at, and it's just a term to just not be too picky, just throw layers, just sit back outside and just experiment, right? Is going to be the sealed lacquer layer over the gesso layer. It'll seal and glue down or whatever this gesso uh, product to the plastic and this will create a barrier so that isopropyl alcohol, ca isopropyl alcohol cannot penetrate the lacquer layer, right? Now why is that? Well because when I lay on the subsequent isopropyl based acrylic washes and if you look back in the content under uh, Diorama Painting 101 there's some really good um, demos, tutorials in there on what happens with this particular procedure right here. I'm going to lay on later on like grays and concrete colors. There's lots by Tamiya that are that are stock and default. And I'm just going to randomly spray these over top of this uh, Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch colors. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just straight 99% isopropyl alcohol right and turn my pressure washer pressure up like I did before and I'm going to spray after I've laid layers on shadowing highlighting just just rough stuff just have fun I'm going to spray and move in and out and 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 remove layers picture all these layers now on top of here I'm going to spray and remove these layers and they're going to wash down just like the real world over 90 years or you know whatever right and some of the darker layers are going to catch on these little form board uh, demarcation, you know, lines created with the gesso or any other alternative paint that, that uh, you, you can use. You, you probably have some great ideas for that anyway, some of you. And uh, as a result, I'll decide when to stop and, and uh, it should come out like the rest of the other buildings, right? So that's the whole idea. And when I do all this... I'm going to have fun doing it too. All right, that's the whole point. I'm not going to let perfectionism and all that, and that's fine. I get that, right? I get the perfectionism part. We all have that, and it's a good thing. But sometimes we need to uh, let loose the Kraken, you know, with our creativity and just ignore that perfectionistic obsession that can oftentimes cause creative blocks and really bind us up so that we can't get into a groove or a zone when we paint. Okay, so thanks a lot for tuning in and uh, look forward to uh, part five when I actually start to lay paint on and do some weathering techniques, okay? Thanks.